To God be the glory and praise, I would like to share to each and every one the dream that I had uh, February the 4th or the 5th. And in this dream, I went into this house and um, the, the house was covered with water. So as I went in the house, I saw this man. He's like 300 to 400 pound man. He was lying down on his bed and the water was actually covered just on top of the bed already. Only his face are coming out of the water. Imagine that his whole body was covered and he's sleeping that way only with his face out of the water so he can breathe and so when we go in you know it's like what's going on and he's having a hard time i guess in moving because of his weight or he don't know that it's already flooding inside and so as i approach as i approach him i tell you there's just like a sudden sorrow that came into my 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 body my heart that i started to weep to weep i was even trying to find out the correct word to say because i was saying it's really like a sad kind of weeping and then i found out the word lament it's really a very uh you know very very uh, it's really just saddened with what's going on with this person. But what's happening was, when I started weeping, I felt in me that it's no longer me. It's not only me, I mean. It's not only me weeping, but I can feel that Jesus was weeping so hard. He was weeping in sorrow, looking at his son. I tell you, I knew... I was crying, crying like if you lost somebody that you truly love, it's an unexplainable kind of sorrow that I was feeling. It's like sad at the same time, uh, you know, you feel so sorry and uh, it's so hard to explain. And then I knew in my mind, I can feel Jesus' pain in his heart for seeing his son having the uh, experiencing this and then i was trying to speak to speak a word but i i'm not able to say the word because i was really like weeping weeping so hard weeping so hard so i was like making a sign on my hand that he grabbed a pen and a paper which i write you know i didn't see how i write it but i wrote down and i know what i'm trying to say that what was written was jesus loves you jesus loves you and that was written on that paper that i was just like weeping and it's like i woke up weeping crying that day what is this trying to tell us brothers and sisters look at it in two ways i'm not trying to insult people who are heavy set this is just look at this in literal and spiritual way a lot of people right now here in america the number one problem that they have is uh, people gaining too much weight it's because of the debauchery that is uh, predominant here in the world right now, especially here in America. A lot of food were actually filled with sugar that will instigate, you know, I, I talk about that with the sodas, right? It will actually trigger those chemicals in our, our brain that will consume and consume more. It has something to do with consumers so they can make money. It's like an addiction. More than the morphine, you're craving for sugar. And that's what's going on. A lot of people are gaining so much weight. And if you watch movies or TV shows, there's a lot of people who are actually not able to get out of their bed because they're so heavy. They're like 400 to 500 pounds because they just eat and eat and they don't do anything. And there's a lot of instances, I've even seen one, that the guy actually showered and then he fell in the shower and he can go out there. He was actually covered with his pee and his, you know, dirt. For days, they were looking for him 
and he was just there. He's screaming, no one's going to help him because nobody knows he's there. And see what's going on. It's actually debauchery. Let's look at that in a physical aspect first. We all know, brothers and sisters, that the Lord said in Matthew 24 verse 36, No one knows about what day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. As it was in the days of Noah, so will it be the at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day Noah entered the ark. In this dream, I'm seeing this guy covered with water. There's flood just like the time of Noah. How can you be able to run and escape the coming flood? No one can do that, right? Because we actually rely in the hands of the Lord. But if you are too heavy out of your debauchery, too much eating, will you be able to even move and run and help other people? You can't even help yourself. So if you look at it, the Lord mentioned there will be flood in His coming. And that's why it's so sad to see that there will be a lot who will be flooded and might be drowned because they're not able to even stand up. And so what is debauchery? What is really debauchery? Debauchery is living a lifestyle contrary to what you were made for. It is living in drunkenness, partying, drug use, sexual immorality, worldliness, worldliness, and basically unholiness. America is the land of the wicked. We are seeing an increase in bestiality, homosexuality, and many more lascivious things. So no true believer would live such a way and the only thing to expect from this type of lifestyle is eternal pain in hell. These are the things that are cool to the world, but what's cool to the world, God hates. So as a believer, you must die to self and take up the cross daily. You are no longer a party animal, drunkard, druggy, or, you know, Eat too much eating but you are a new creation of God so do not love the things of the world if anyone loves the things of the world the love of the Father is not in them and the Lord speak about that so try to look at this in literal and spiritual way the enemy really wanted us to you know, the enemy really wanted to destroy not only the spiritual being of mankind, but also the physical. Why? Because they know that our body is the kingdom of God. And we are supposed to bear much fruits, to carry the words of God with us, and to bring that light to the world. How can you bring the light of Jesus to the world if you are lying down there in your house and just eating and drinking and doing whatever you wanted to do and not doing anything for the kingdom of the Lord. So in Romans 13 verse 12, the Lord said, We should live in a right way, like people who belong to the day. We should not have, what, we should not have wild parties or be drunk. We should not be involved in sexual sin or any kind of immoral behavior. We should not involve, uh, we should not cause argument and trouble or be jealous, but be like the Lord Jesus Christ, so that when people see what you do, they will see Christ. Praise God. We are supposed to be a role model to other people. If you believe in Jesus and accepted Him, you should live like a Christ, Christ-like. The Lord said, be holy for he is holy. So how can people believe in the Lord Jesus if you are teaching you are not supposed to do this, you're not supposed to do that, and then you're doing it yourself? 
So how will they believe? That's why I've encountered one lady when I was talking about the Lord. She said, oh, she went to the church and their pastor is actually having an affair with these people in the church are having an affair, immoral affair. And so they stop. So is that the kind of example we're supposed to show? If the Lord said, take care of ourselves because it's a temple of God. Are we supposed to hurt ourselves and pour and pour everything that will hurt it? In 1 Peter 4 verse 3 to 6, the Lord said, You have had enough in the past of the evil things that godless people enjoy, their immorality and lust, their feasting and drunkenness and wild parties and their terrible worship of idols. Your former friends are surprised, you know, of worship of idols. So people might probably be surprised if you used to be a drunkard or you're a party person and then suddenly you will just get out of it. You know, the flood of uh, worldly desires are coming and it's actually in here right now. If you look at this dream, it could also be interpreted in another way. A lot of people are just lying or like enjoying, like in a jacuzzi kind, enjoying the flood of the worldly desires. Enjoying the flood of a pornography, of uh, whatever food there, of sexual immorality, of idolatry, whatever. It's flooding now. You can see it everywhere. And a lot of people who are blinded, they're just laying on it. They don't know that it's only their face are left. And soon they will totally be gone. And soon they will totally be drowned and totally be dead. That little portion that is left is giving them a chance to breathe. Giving them a chance that Jesus is speaking to them. I love you. Why are you doing this to yourself? Why are you hurting yourself? Why are you going away from me? The Lord wants us to know He loves us. And He's calling you, telling you, Come home with me, my son. Come home with me, my daughter. Because with the Lord, this, there is life. The Lord will give you the breath of life. The Lord will give you the eternal life. And not death. Don't allow the flood of destruction to destroy you. Seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Because the Lord loves us so much. He loves us so much. He said, your former friends in here, your former friends will be surprised when you no longer plunge into the flood of wild, destructive things that they do. They might slander you if they notice that, hey, you used to be a party goer, you know, you do drugs with them, you, you do sexual immorality with them. Once you accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior, and you get out of that crew, they will slander you, you know, they will actually tell things about you but remember that they have to face God they have to face God and the Lord will judge all the living and the dead so don't worry about what other people are going to say worry about what our God the Father is going to say so do not be conformed to the world. The Lord said in Romans 12 verse 1 to 3, Brothers and sisters, in view of all we have just shared about God's compassion, I encourage you to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, dedicated to God and pleasing to Him. This kind of worship is appropriate for you. Don't become like the people of this world. Instead, change the way you think. 
then you will always be able to determine what God really wants, what is good, pleasing, and perfect. Praise be to God. See, the Lord, He wants this body. He wants us to offer our body clean and pure in the eyes of the Lord. And that's why He said, bride, be ready. You know, we're not supposed to have any spot. We're supposed to be spotless, blameless, you know, spotless and no wrinkle. White and clean. And so we have to obey the Lord. Not to obey what the world is offering. Don't allow the flood of Satan, all the luxuries he's offering in the world. Don't drown yourself there. He's trying to make you feel good. And you see, if you look at it, he's totally drowned. But then only the face, anytime soon, he will totally submerge in the water and he's going to die. He's 70, 90% dead. But the Lord still gave him a chance. The Lord loves the righteous and the sinners. He don't want anyone to perish, but he wants everybody to be saved. And that's why he's giving us a chance, each and every one of us. All of us are sinners, and he's calling us by name. He's calling you, calling us to come back to him because he loves us. That's why God the Father for God so loved the world that He gave His one and only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have an everlasting life. See, He sent His Son, Jesus Christ. And do you think when Jesus see you that you're just laying down there so crazy watching the football the whole time just eating your food and just watch football watch your movies not doing anything do you think jesus will be enjoying seeing you uh not working on his kingdom but destroying your body no that's why he was weeping because he wants us to prepare ourselves for his coming he's going to come and get us and how will you be ready if you are already so submerged with what is given by the demon in the world and aside from this it's also showing that there will be another flood this dream is showing me there will be another flood that it will rise up, that it will go higher than the bed of people. Look at that. So, it is hard to get in heaven, and many people who profess Jesus as Lord will not enter. Look at Luke 13, verse 24 to 27. The Lord said, Try hard to enter through the narrow door. I can guarantee that many will try to enter, but they won't succeed. Why? Because some people who want to go to the narrow door, if they will be enticed by the devil, they might slip away. And that's why the Lord said, endure until the end. Be strong, be courageous. Have I not commanded you? The Lord said, have I not commanded you? Be strong, be courageous. And that's in Joshua 9. Always remember, brothers and sisters, no one who practices sin and lives a continuous sinful lifestyle will go to heaven. You just can't say, I love the Lord, but then your lifestyle is still with the world. And when that flood comes, it will really drown you dead. The Lord wants us to constantly be ready because He will take care of us. So in Galatians 5 verse 18 to 21, the Lord said, But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious. 
sexual immorality, moral impurity, promiscuity, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, strife, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambitions, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and anything similar. I tell you about these things in advance. As I told you before, that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's the word of the Lord. So whatever the world is offering, brothers and sisters, you might say it's hard, but nothing is impossible with the Lord. If we trust in Him with all our body, mind, heart, and soul. For once we, once we surrender ourselves, ourselves to the lord it's no longer us who is working it's the lord working in us it's no longer us we're dead and it's jesus christ in us that's why he gave us the holy spirit as an advocate and so why was i weeping i felt like jesus was weeping I can sense that there's somebody in me and I know it's Jesus in me weeping with me that very moment. So sad, lamenting, so sad. In Luke 19 verse 41, Jesus is actually weeping also. Not just in my dream, you might probably say, Jesus is weeping. Look at basing on the Bible story. In Luke 19 verse 41, as he approached Jerusalem and saw the city, he wept over it and said, If you, even you, had only known on this day what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. Jesus wept in this part of the Bible because he knows the punishment of these people. He knows the punishment of these people. And if you try to relate it to the dream, why is Jesus weeping to this man, to all the people who are living in sinful life? He is weeping because he said, if you, even you, had only known on this day what, you, what would bring you peace, but now it is hidden from your eyes. The Lord is weeping in sadness, knowing that Jesus loves you. And if you accept Jesus, for Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the life, no one comes into the Father except through Him. The name, the name, the God, God the Son, who will save us, who will give us the peace, the joy, the love, everlasting life. If you only knew. But for those who keep their eyes blinded to the truth, for those who just allow the world to speak on their ears, they are totally blinded and deaf to the truth. So why did he say that in Luke 19 verse 43? The days will come upon you when your enemies will build an embankment against you and encircle you and hem you in one in on every side. They will dash you to the ground, you and the children within your walls. They will not leave one stone on another because you did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. Brothers and sisters, Jesus is coming. We know that he's going to come in his white horse together with the saints. Just the way he raised up from the dead. He rose up from the dead. He's going down with the clouds, with the, with the thousands of angels. But right at this moment, Jesus is walking on earth. Knocking on the heart of each and every one of us. Telling us, wake up, wake up. I am here, wake up. Jesus is telling us, Jesus loves you. Wake up, repent. In John 11 verse 35, Jesus wept. 
Then the Jews said, See how he loved him? Jesus wept because this guy forgot his name. Lazarus died. And Lazarus is his friend. Jesus wept because he died. He loves him. He's his friend. Remember what the Lord Jesus Christ said? We are no longer his servant. We are his friends. And that's the reason why in order for you to prove how much you love your friend is when you die for your friend. That's why Jesus considered us as a friend because he died for us to save us from ourselves. You know, from our sins, I mean. And then, if there will be a time that people hate us, they're already hating us and persecute us, and if you will die out of persecution, rejoice, because great is your reward in heaven. The Lord wants us to know that He wept, he wept here on earth. He wept, he wept in two ways. He wept because his friend died. He wept because the other one, the other one don't know what's going to be waiting for them as punishment. But even the other one died, he was able to raise him from the dead. Look at the analogy of these two wept, a weeping of Jesus. The first one, Lazarus, he died and Jesus wept, right? Why did he die? If you look at ourselves right now, when we sin, we die. We're dead because we're sinning. But when we repent and accept Jesus as our Lord and our Savior, we are saved. And Jesus gives us the life. And that's how it's like an illustration that he is weeping because of the death of his friend, because of the death of his children. But then if we repent from our sins, repent from our sins, it's a spiritual death, right? So while we're still alive and you're sinning and you repent from your sin, the Lord will give you life and he will raise you back and you are alive spiritually. But for those who don't want to repent and just continually be drowned in their sin, Jesus is going to weep to them too. Why? Because he's weeping that they do not know what is waiting for them. The punishment for all the sins that they're doing. So why did I wrote Jesus loves you? In Romans 5 verse 8, but God demonstrates His own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. See? That's how much Jesus or God the Father loves us. He sent His Son to die for us because He loves us. And that's why Jesus wept because He loves us. It's like he died on the cross for you and you still don't get it? You still don't understand it? And you still don't want to listen? And you still don't want to open your eyes? The Lord is trying to tell us if you only do the love, the peace, the everlasting joy that you will have with Him, life everlasting with Him in heaven. It's like, if you only know, He can give you all the best love, peace, joy, all the things that you can find here on earth. Is there with Jesus Christ and with God. Not like what the world is offering, but what God and Jesus is offering to us. No more pain, no more sorrow, no more persecution, no more killing, no more... Uh, idolatry, adultery, no more of those. No sin at all. Because God is pure and holy. 
and therefore his children will be changed into a new and glorified body like the angels that will never weep, that will never feel pain, that will never be hurt. Because they are with God the Father Almighty through and His Son Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in there, with the angels and all our brothers and sisters in Christ. Praise be to God. In John 3.16, brothers and sisters, God wants us to remember. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whoever believes in Him will not perish but have an everlasting life. Let me ask you, did you accept Jesus as your Lord and your Savior? Did you repent from your sins? Did you ask Jesus to come into your life and make Him as your Lord and your Savior? Brothers and sisters, the flood of sin and darkness are rising up just like the time of Noah. God flood the earth to wipe all the man, mankind and all those fallen angels. And he said he's not going to do it again. But it doesn't mean he's not going to flood certain portions of the earth. There will still be flood, earthquake other calamities to happen. This flood of sin are scattered everywhere. Don't allow yourself to be drowned in this flood. For Jesus is calling you. He's calling you. He loves you so much. He loves us. He loves us, brothers and sisters. If you only do and felt the feeling and the weeping that I had in that dream, you will understand the sadness, the sorrow, the lamentation that Jesus is feeling because He is giving you the life that no one can give except Him. He's giving you the peace that you've been looking for that no one can give except Him. He's giving you the joy all those things that no one can give except Him. Don't turn your back from the calling of Jesus Christ. Don't turn your back. He loves us before it's too late. In Ephesians 2 verse 4, brothers and sisters, we have to remember, But God being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which He loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. That's how much His mercy and grace to us. All we have to do is call upon the name of the Lord and we will be saved. So therefore, brothers and sisters, in 1 Peter 1 verse 16, the Lord said, Since it is written, You shall be holy. For I am holy. This is the word of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I give the glory and praise to God the Father Almighty through His Son, Jesus Christ. And I thank the Holy Spirit for guiding us, for guiding us, and for letting us speak the words of the Lord. Brothers and sisters, take good care of your body. For the Lord is holy and He wants us to remain holy. The Holy Spirit is our advocate. God gave us the Holy Spirit to dwell in us, to speak through us, to teach us, to guide us, and walk with us. How can the Holy, how can the Holy Spirit dwell in us if you continually live in sin? Sin and the Holy Spirit don't go together. So therefore, just like what the Lord said, you shall be holy for God is holy. And you might say, that's impossible. Nothing is impossible in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. He commanded us and it is written. And the Lord said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. 
He is true and faithful to His word. And therefore, it's going to come into pass. And therefore, He is true to His words. That if we obey Him, if we obey Him and walk righteously with Him, He will count us, He will count us holy in His sight. May God bless each and every one of us. In Jesus, Yeshua's name, amen and amen.